Hey, and welcome. I'm going to be doing something new today. Um, not one of our vintage lookbacks or one of our retro crossovers, but we have the new NECA Splinter as Van Helsing in the Universal Monsters TMNT crossover set. Uh, this guy came out a couple weeks ago. Uh, not everywhere got him on time, so we finally got ours. Uh, so if you haven't been following these, we did a review on the April O'Neil one. There, This is the, I believe, the fifth in the line, or the, yes, the fifth in the line. So we got uh, Ralph as Frankenstein's monster, we got Michelangelo as the mummy, we got Leonardo as the hunchback, and we got April O'Neil as the bride of Frankenstein. Uh, in the future, we have Donatello coming as the Invisible Man, and Casey Jones as Phantom of the Opera. So this is Splinter as Ben Helsing. So as always, let's take a look at this box. Now on the front, this has been consistent. You get this little uh, hand-drawn look of the character in his uh, universal monster-inspired look. But I think the real um, so the real charm of the box is the back, where it has all these callouts of the character and his accessories, but in a style of those old 1930s and 1940s Universal monster movie posters, where they have all that excitement called out in the um, odd odd uh, collection of fonts and uh, crooked writing and all that stuff. So they did a did a great job of mimicking that over into this uh, the box art, and that's been consistent with all the boxes so far. And then, of course, we have the, the window, which has another great shot of the character on this side, and then the character and his accessories here in the window. Now, again, it's Velcro. I'm not a fan of Velcro. If you've watched any of the, um, the three zero videos I've did with the uh, DX lines, they're all Velcro. I, I just don't like it. I think it wears over time. This little stick-on piece comes off sometimes and it just doesn't work. Uh, so if you like keeping the boxes, and for these I do, because like I said, they, they're awesome. They look great. The Velcro just doesn't work. I wish they would just do a, a cheap magnet and put that in there. That'll last for like a thousand years. It's not going to lose its magnetism, and it won't have to. You won't have to worry about it uh, coming off because it would be uh, underneath the flap here. So uh, that's all for the the look on the box. So why don't we hop in and check out this guy and his accessories? I got my splinter open. Want to check out what's uh, on the inside here? Now they have a nice little backdrop. Um, you couldn't see earlier with the character in the box because of the plastic glare. But you can see he's in like a little library with a leather armchair there and a, uh, um, uh, or I guess a regular player here and some books. So it just gives like a little study uh, look for Van Helsing being the academic he was in addition to a vampire hunter. So he, uh, that's a nice little backdrop for him. Uh, this figure, of course, it's uh, Splinter, comes with a stand. It's really hard to find a nice center of gravity for Splinter. So this is kind of nice that they included it in this set to give him a way to, to balance there. So then we have the character himself here. He's secured by just one little um, plastic strap across the waist, so not too difficult to get out. And he's got this great leather coat on here. Uh, so, and then a little bandolier, we'll give you an up close shot here. Uh, his tail is gonna be a little flexible, of course. You could tell with the little cutouts in it, that means it's gonna have a little wire in it to flex. Uh, and then you see this great detailing on this coat, make it look very leather-like with the, the bandolier on the front for holding the stakes. And of course, on the back, you could hold the, the crossbow and the holster there. Uh, he's got these great spectacles on, a uh, hat, which is molded to the head. The hat does not come off. And then he has got his little, uh, his fur tied up <laughs> like a little, uh, a little beard there um, at the, at the uh, front of his face. It looks like he has some gloves on his hands uh, instead of his normal fur colored hands so that's a little different to elevate that but underneath you could still see he has pretty much the same outfit on that he had in the original film so it's like they took a the standard edition movie splinter layered a jacket on top of him with new hands and then a completely new head sculpt with these glasses on there so uh, pretty cool he still keeps kind of true to splinter even though he's got this, his whole universal look here. I'm gonna test out the stand to see if we get him up. Um, I'm not gonna to try to play around with balancing him. Uh, he's just a very odd shape and weight distribution, particularly in that head. So he just won't, he just won't stick around if you try to get him to do it. Um, so that's not bad, that works pretty well. Just one foot in a peg there. So we got the, the crossbow here. I'll try taking that out carefully. Um, or maybe not. This is you know, good. So the crossbow, I'll give you a little close up here. It's got a sight on the one side and um, it's got a, oh look, it is an elastic string on it. That's pretty cool. 
So you could pull it back a little bit, uh, maybe even into this groove. Um, I don't want to overstretch it, but uh, that's pretty cool. You get this little sight on the one side of it. Uh, he has an alternate head, and this is a no-hat head. So uh, I'll give you a shot of him in a second with the no-hat head, but you could pop this off. It looks like the, the neck joint there sticking um, <clears throat> instead of straight up, it sticks more horizontal. So you could, if you wanted to switch out and get a no-hat look, you could do that with Splinter with this no-hat look here. And then, of course, he's going to have a huge assortment of hands. Every NECA figure has that. It's a double-edged sword. It's great to have that expression. But I have broken these little wrist joints because they just don't, um, they don't have a lot of tensile strength uh, when you're trying to put them in and out. You just got to be really careful with how you do it. Uh, so we got some what I like to call weapon-holding hands here uh, where they have that specific clawed groove to them. Uh, so to help you hold things and then we got some uh, expression hands where he has a pointing figure uh, I don't think this is designed for a trigger uh, Guard, yeah, it's too loose to hold To hold the uh, the crossbow. So I think that's more of a point um, So we got an assortment of weapons. Of course he has uh, We Use our little knife here to take these out. So we got a which looks like a uh, grappling arrow or something here. It's got a little prong end on it. I'll give you a close-up. So a grappling arrow. We got an arrow with a ton of garlic on it. That's kind of fun uh, for, for vampires, obviously. Uh, we got some just standard arrows here. We got a set of standard arrows. And then we have a bunch of stakes. Uh, these are really cool. And these are designed, I guess, to fit into the, the bandolier on the front right here. So you could put a couple of these across the front and uh, to fill him out and give him that, that look like he's carrying a lot of gear. So that's cool that they're not molded onto him. They're an addition to him. So they give that figure a little bit more depth and functionality because you can take these out and put them in that weapon holding hand and uh, slay whatever vampires are around there. And uh, last but not least, uh, no slayer would be um, equipped without a combat knife. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna assume this is made of silver. <laughs> Obviously, uh, vampires don't like silver, neither do werewolves, so this kind of equips him for those scenarios. And there's a holster on the side here on his bandolier that's a little bit wider than the standard one. Um, we'll see if he has it here on the box. Uh, I don't see it on the box artwork. Yep, so they designed that for the knife there as well. Uh, and then the crossbow here, I guess you kind of stick it in with the, the back end on it because it doesn't look like it's going to neatly fit in here with the, the front end. So I guess you gotta maneuver it in there um, and you get that look of the crossbow being in his, his satchel here. It doesn't fit in really neat. Um, it doesn't fold. I don't think it's meant to fold. It'd be neat if the, uh, the crossbar section pulled it up so you could just kind of slide it in there and he could pull it out, but it doesn't do that. Although it does have some sort of holes on the side of it, like you can mount it on something, but I don't see a um, I don't see like a belt buckle or somewhere for you to mount it. Uh, what I think they intended this was to hold all his arrows in the back here uh, for you, like a quiver, and then you could draw them uh, from there. But I don't see a place to sort of mount the the crossbow to, even though it has holes, peg holes in the side, like it's uh, intended to clip onto something. But anyway. Uh, some fun little details I'll point out. I'll give you a close-up. You can see a throwing star on the back of his hat here. So a little uh, ode to his martial arts skills. So a little hidden throwing star in the hat. It's a fun little detail they snuck in there. Um, I don't see any other little things like that. But, uh, I mean, they have great detail all around on this character. And uh, I'll give you another close-up here. You can see him with his, his crossbow. And I put that alternate head on him. Uh, you could just see all that great that great detailing on the bandolier, on the um, I guess leather jacket with that fur top on it, uh, in the hands that you could switch out, just give you a little more versatility with the character. But I think he fits in really great with the monster line. Uh, he's he was a bit of an odd choice because they were going for more mainline monsters, and Van Helsing's not a monster, but he's monster adjacent. So I think what that means is, and I said this in a previous video, we're going to get Shredder as Dracula. It only makes sense. Uh, Shredder has a cape. Uh, he has 
um, all those little pointy objects on him, like, like vampire have pointy teeth. Uh, he's the head of the bad guys, and in a lot of movies where there's multiple monsters, a la Monster Squad, Dracula is portrayed as sort of the boss bad guy. Um, and then he has his Splinter counterpart, and it says on the back of the box here, the uh, Slayer of Shredder. So Van Helsing Slayer of Dracula. I think we're it's all but certain we're going to see an announcement of Shredder as Dracula um, in some form of Dracula. I'm not uh, whether they go with the Bello Gashi version or a different character, the classic Nosferatu version, don't know. But uh, I think it's pretty certain that we're going to see Shredder as uh, Dracula. Uh, beyond that, you know, we're excited to see what other monster movies they're missing, such as Creature from the Black Lagoon. Again, I think Toka. It's kind of a no-brainer there. He is a creature. <laughs> he is aquatic based. He pretty he much looks like the guy. They just need to um, make a couple changes to that. Uh, the Wolfman, uh, again, Razar, uh, he's a wolf. <laughs> he kind of looks like he doesn't need much tooling done on him. I'm sure they make some changes. Uh, I'd like to see what kind of fun things they do with his armor to make it more uh, run into that uh, Wolfman era kind of look. Uh, and uh, beyond that, there's not a lot of other characters they made in the movie line. Uh, we do have Kino coming out. I don't know if they're going to turn him into a universal monster. Um, we also had... Um, uh, Danny, I don't know if they're going to turn him into a monster. And then we have the Foot Soldier, which if there's some kind of like mole people or something they could turn him into, you know, that would work because there's a lot of them. But I think that's uh, like our next one. We're probably going to see Shredder announced. It makes the most sense. It pairs with the just released uh, Splinter. And I think it'd be a great addition to the line. And he's like a huge monster to be missing. Uh, the other ones they'd done for the Turtles, we had uh, the Hunchback, which was not really a bad guy, just kind of misunderstood. Um, same with Frankenstein, you can't really blame him. Uh, blame him. He was just a victim of a circumstance. You got uh, the Mummy, which again, he had his, his own motives. He wasn't necessarily evil, he was just looking for love. And then you have um, the Invisible Man, which he did some bad things, but I think they the, the movie kind of set it up as a, another tragic set of circumstances of science gone wrong. So... The turtles are monsters, but they're not like wholly evil, whereas Dracula has always been portrayed as evil, and they've kind of reserved that figure for Shredder. Uh, so again, I think it really makes sense, so we'll see. But this has been our look at uh, the NECA Splinter crossover as Van Helsing. Uh, really sharp figure, a great addition to the line. We got more coming up. Excited about Donatello as the Invisible Man. He should be out in about a month or two. So uh, we'll take a look at him next, and then Casey Jones is the Phantom of the Opera, which is the most obvious choice for him, so that makes sense too. So uh, this has been our look at uh, this new guy in the turtle line. Uh, we're going to keep with the turtles theme this week, so our next video will also be turtles related. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, we'll have more coming up, so as always, like, subscribe, and follow, and we'll see you guys next time.